Well, I think one of the issues is if you've got competing interests. Uh, the, the public and the, and the uh, clinicians are going to have the emphasis of a center of excellence on providing the utmost cutting edge care that's available. The researchers are going to be interested in the mechanisms and of course you want, you, you can't really do one without the other and both sides. And I agree, when you start talking about that, these are not small projects, these are large projects. And then they have to be integrated one with another enough to where they, like other centers of excellence, they get together enough to share information and methodology so that what comes out of this is meaningful. This is not a small undertaking. And, and uh, I, I think I heard uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Uh, um, Coe say this morning that uh, things that don't cost much will probably move through the system a little bit quicker than things that do. If that analogy holds true, this one will bring up, this will be the caboose of the train. My, my thoughts is that with this we need to organize and prioritize. So, so we've heard free, cheap, e expensive, uh, and, and group things by that order and then prioritize within each category. I, I, I heard from let Dr. Me, let Dr. me just add one quick that, comment is that it becomes value added. If one can demonstrate in this committee should, if this committee can't demonstrate it, I don't know who could, to show that that expensive back-end caboose is in fact extremely valuable in the short term as well as in the long term, not only for the patients, which the clinician parts of our brain say that, but for the public as well. Uh, I think, it, and, and that's integrating the information as it's developed and what information needs to be developed, then that doesn't seem quite so expensive anymore. It's not just five right. centers of excellence. It's a legitimate reason to spend the I, money. I think what I heard this morning is that Dr. Coe is interested in looking at these recommendations and working with us on you know, deciding how, how do we do something about it. Right. And, and to engage in a dialogue once we've got things organized and prioritized would, would make things easier for us and certainly easier for him. And can I, can I just add, since we're see. kind of bringing up Dr. Coe, he clearly said to us, when we asked him a couple questions, and I think Art was one of the ones who asked him the question, he said, what is the need? Yep. What is the need? Keep yourself focused on the prize. And that should be our objective. You know, what is the great need out there? And that should help us think about what we need to be recommending. Nancy. So, I'm not meaning to split this all up into small bits and scatter our thoughts. And understanding that prioritization is one of our key goals right now as a committee today to go through our prior uh, recommendations and try to do some prioritization. Um, <laughs> but what Lenny just said is so important. When, when we're trying to frame what the needs of this community uh, really has, I mean, we have to come down to, <laughs> I can mean, say three times a day, 85% are undiagnosed. I mean, there's, there's this tremendous lack of access to knowledgeable clinicians, knowledgeable care that's hampering our research efforts hugely because we don't have access to the patient population to study the population in an organized fashion. And so, uh, uh, even though that is probably the most expensive thing on our recommendations list, I would very much like to recommend that 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 when this comes before the the uh, secretary again, that we have those darn centers of excellence still up there high on the list at the very top end of the list, not the caboose. Uh, <laughs> but I do think that we can also get some very meaningful work done in our very short day today in terms of trying to press some of these other recommendations that that could actually be done and not just you know referred back to committee, but but done today. So, uh, yeah, Christine, I'm sorry. Sorry, Christine, go. Um, well, let me just um, um, comment. Uh, it, this is a related comment. I think we also need to think about what kind of infrastructure do we have um, either in the public or private sector and at at ARC, we have developed two research networks that integrate research and practice. One is a primary care research network that's made up of primary care practices, and the other is an integrated health system research network. And the whole idea is to try to see how research can actually be integrated into practice. What can we learn from practicing physicians? And I would urge us to think about perhaps 
either using one of these ARC networks um, and um, getting some uh, a task order or a contract or a grant to look at a chronic fatigue syndrome in practice or a similar model. And we've got five or six years experience uh, doing this uh, in primary care and in other areas. And it really is to try to bring together research and the practice of healthcare, practice of medicine. And just a tiny question on that. In your networks, are they already on EMRs that you can use electronic medical records to help instruct, Well, that's a very teach. good question. Um, I, th I couldn't say they're all absolutely on them, but I think that there's a great uh, number of them that are. And we have a big effort at ARC also to encourage the um, implementation of because it's not a better opportunity than right now to use that as a teaching right. tool for primary care and other providers right. and then get your research back because it's all in the system. So but I, I just think it's something to think about. Yeah. And I can get you more information about that. Well, one thing that Dr. Jones has, has mentioned to me that obviously a, a priority of the government is, is expanding health care and providing access to underserved populations. Well, we have an underserved population here, so uh, to, to make some recommendations about uh, education of physicians in this illness so that we can access uh, some of those people that are, that are going undiagnosed and then also provide services for the, the people that do have a current diagnosis. It's interesting that we have Hearst and Art kind of sitting right next to each other. And, and I'm just kind of wondering, you know, um, HRSA actually I think a number of years ago had a program that involved kind of a network of providers and, and this particular area to educate physicians. And, and I'm not sure whether you both collaborated with each other in, on, on that entity or, or other entities, but is there a way that both of your kind of um, organizations and agencies collaborate together where the synergy of both of your groups could be worked with some of the issues that we're dealing with at this committee? We, we were just discussing that and, and agreeing that that's a possibility, definitely. We have, we have in the past worked together on looking at the collaboratives, the health disparity collaborative efforts, and are more and more um, discussing this, these options. So, can, can you tell us kind of how something like that maybe could translate into some of the needs that Nancy and others here have been talking about? Well, one of the things that, as, as I was thinking about it, one of the challenges that I keep coming back to in these meetings is the issue of guidelines. And um, I understand there's, there's certain levels of guidelines currently available, but in terms of actual um, implementation of the practice guidelines and what that means on the ground, I think there's a lot of opportunity to, to look at at least where the, where the guidelines are now, which is very elementary, um, to look at what that means. Uh, in terms of practice and in terms of uh, of identifying people with the diagnosis, but then we keep going back to in which diagnosis are we are we going to use? So I think there's some background work that would need to be done. But I'd say at a at a very preliminary level, uh, understanding how the guidelines that currently exist actually play out on the ground would be an important um, important role that we could play for starters. Let's see.